Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And in today's video I'm going to look at why we had a shortage of uh, lithium and the sort of problems that caused for us. In last week's videos I talked about how we'd done the upgrade for in, in the space exploration version and how that had introduced a load of changes in the um, in how, how space exploration and Crastorio 2 work together. I think the basic idea behind it was that um, the Crastorio 2 changes made a lot of the stuff in space exploration a little bit too easy. So now the new version of space exploration goes in it tweaks a load of those recipes to to increase the difficulty a bit bring things back into line and make everything a bit more balanced with the uh, the original intent and so one of the most obvious things for example is that all these um, electrolysis plants and advanced chemical plants around here take far more electricity than they used to and another one is that the uh, chlorine is no longer a closed loop system so previously you generate a little bit of chlorine it would then be turned into hydrogen chloride like this which would then be turned into lithium chloride which would then be turned into lithium and the chlorine would be passed back into the back into the back to the beginning to then be made into more hydrogen chloride and so on. And just go, it would just go round and round and round in the loop. Now it has been changed somewhat so that the uh, the recipe at the end here now doesn't give back as much chlorine as was taken in at the beginning. I have to admit I'm not sure where through the stages the chlorine is specifically lost, but somewhere somewhere in here it gets used up so you don't get it back again, and that means you need to generate steadily more and more and more chlorine in order to keep the lithium production running. And so this meant that our entire lithium factory down here failed. It ran out of chlorine very very quickly and just ground to a halt. So, fine. Tristan has come in now, and he's, he's, he's upgraded it. So last week he'd done a bit of an upgrade over here. He put in some extra machines making the chlorine. Now he's gone, he's, he's added in uh, more machines making sand, as you can see here, and making lots and lots more chlorine. And that now means that, as you can see, these pipes are now full. We've got all the chlorine we could possibly breathe. Uh, and, it, and, it's now, and we now have a nice steady stream of lithium coming out of the top here. We can also probably potentially re remove the uh, the limiter on here because it's no longer particularly valid because I think all of this uh, lithium production is now equivalent and we're no longer taking the lithium chloride away to uh, into space by delivery cannon because delivery cannons are old tech that we're not using anymore. We should perhaps find some way of uh, recycling all of these delivery cannon capsules, but I I, I don't I, I'm not sure if you can and I don't don't care enough. They can just sit there on the belts and be forgotten about and just sort of gradually rot there. And so, as you can clearly see up here, by the fact there is a full train and a full warehouse and some stationary belts, we've caught up with the lithium production. So Tristan did Tristan's big boost to the system, which was done through putting in a massive quantity of um, of electrolysis plants, all with speed modules and a beacon in the middle to make make the whole thing run really, really quickly, has now generated us enough lithium that we are once again happy and the system is working again. However, I feel like we're kind of still trying to uh, trying to catch up from these these shortages we were seeing. And one of the places the shortages manifested was down here where we're making the, well, the red circuits among others. And as you can see, we are currently, we are still playing catch up. If we look over here, um, the, where, the train is full. There is a decent amount in the warehouse, but the warehouse hasn't quite filled back up again. But it's going well. We are generating large quantities of red circuits. As you can see, these uh, assembly machines over here, between the, what is it, five of them, they are spraying out an entire, uh, an entire blue belt's worth of, um, of, of red circuits. And it looks like they are all running, and they're all running pretty much flat out. And so the reason this is linked to the lithium is because you require lithium in order to produce the electronic components that are being that are coming through here and are being brought in by one of the many many trains. So over here we have a supply, we have half a warehouse full of electronic components so that's not going too badly. And as is traditional the electronic components are being made elsewhere, specifically over here on the uh, in, a, in their own little town. And as you can see we are bringing in, well there is a solid blue, well mostly solid blue belt of lithium flowing in here along with plastic and glass and, and silicon and that's being churned through. We're making loads and loads of the electronic components here and pouring out what looks like about four blue belts. So for four, four belts in, four belts out, that's pretty good. And is assisted somewhat by putting productivity modules into all of these machines and then slapping a beacon in the middle. So this is a fairly modern system. The only way that we could potentially upgrade this with better modules, um, either uh, productivity or speed, and we could upgrade these to the higher tier um, assembly machines. So the ones you saw over when we we're, when we're looking at the uh, circuit production down here. These are the tier four um, assembly machines, the advanced ones. Uh, and they, in the, these ones you can put four modules in them and they run quite a bit quicker as well as you can see over there on the right uh and so these will now these these will these are better um, because of the mostly because of the extra modules. But to be honest, it ain't broke, so I don't think there's any real need to upgrade over here. I will take it back. No, you can still only put four modules into these. However, if you use faster machines, you can get away with using higher tier modules because you don't need as many of them. So the expense isn't quite as ridiculous. And so this system is happily producing all of the uh, all of the um, electronic components we need now because we have enough lithium down here. We have that half warehouse that I mentioned earlier, and so that probably means. 
we are, yes, we are not currently in air requesting another train because that is enough for now. As long as you have a decent supply of it, having a bit slightly around half a warehouse is plenty. It'll keep the system running for quite a while and we can send another train out when we need it. It's also worth noting as a bit of an aside that we have another area over here where the, uh, where the electronic components are being made. And these are being, were originally being made for the solar panels, and then we thought, actually, we need these elsewhere. Let's pull them out, take them somewhere else. And um, so we, we used, so we were at one point pulling the uh, electronic components from here to a train that was parked up here. And we have now since stopped doing that because the new system we've made for uh, for building them is is much much quicker and more efficient, just generally better uh, over this one and easier to expand and produces them at a much much faster rate. As you can see down here, we have a red belt at best coming out of here. The other one was multiple blue belts, so you can see why this one is now not really worth bothering with. However, for some reason, a train had come up here to try and pick them up. Um, and so this, this station had, had a train sitting in it that wasn't ever going to be satisfied. So I've re I also released the train from here and that should now allow it to sort of trundle around merrily and start picking up all the electronic components we require. As you can see here from the uh, station's status, we, we've got a, a train limit set up being set on here and it's set to zero because there's nothing in the warehouse. So this means that a train will never be summoned over here. If we wanted to, at some point in the future, we, we could set this up to bring the, the uh, electronic components in by train and have this as a drop-off station instead of a pickup, and then feed them in from the newer system down to the, all, these, all the solar panel production down here. However, I don't think there's any real point in doing that. Uh, if we did, we'd also be able to remove half of these uh, stations over here, the, the ones that are only required for the electronic components and not required for the solar panels. But I think we probably won't do that. We probably won't do any of that. What we could do, potentially, is upgrade the uh, productivity modules in all of these assembly machines so they're all, well, so th firstly, so they're tier three ones, and secondly, so they're full productivity rather than having that one speed module in at the side there. And yes, these machines would then run very, very slowly. But at the rate I think we're using solar panels up, I believe that would be absolutely fine and we do have a stock of well there's 80 stacks of, um, of them being stored in this warehouse down here so that means a train can come and grab them and as long as we don't require two trains worth of solar panels in very quick succession which you know seems kind of unlikely then we should be absolutely fine so that's a small upgrade that's worth doing especially given the number of uh, solar panels we seem to be getting through and with the number we're building and not only that were the ones we're putting out in space in order to try and generate power for all of our factory especially when some of the power consumption goes up a bit uh, but also quite a lot of them are put into some of the probes and the satellites and the things like that that we make and so lots of those will need to be made in order to keep the, uh, the system happy up there. The other thing I want to note here is that we have both of the trains for the uh, electronic components are now parked in the station down here so if we go over and have a look at this station you can see that we've got the, st the train parked in here, pick it's picked up the electronic components, it's ready to go as and when, and then as soon as it goes, we've got the second train also parked here, ready to swoop in and then pick up the components. So we've got, we've got the standard sort of stacker over here that has room for two trains to be parked outside the station, and then each one of the stations has rooms for two trains to be parked inside it as well, which, to be honest, for most of them is a bit excessive, but for this one, it kind of works. So I think having set it up like this is probably not an entirely bad thing, TM. We also have plenty of room for a bit of further expansion should we decide we actually need a bit more, uh, a few more electronic components, or rather we need the electronic components a bit faster. We could put another copy of all of this in over here like that. There's easily room for that to go in there. Um, and then we and then we just have a second belt coming out of each of these, uh, each of these warehouses. So yeah, room for expansion, but currently not required. Up in Norbit, this shortage of lithium caused all kinds of uh, follow-on problems as well with all of the sort of the cloud production over here. So lithium is required for making plasma stream, which is then required for making every single other type of cloud in some way, shape or form. And so, running out of lithium up here meant, yes, as I say, we ran out of plasma stream, although that has now picked back up again. And that meant, well, we, we seem to be okay on whatever this green stuff is. What is the green stuff? Green stuff is proton stream, because we don't use very much of that. I don't even know where it gets used off the top of my head. Probably in energy science, which is, which is why I don't remember. Um, but also it's needed for ion stream, which is needed in huge quantities because we use that for spaceships, we use it, and we use it for lots of the science, it's just used all over the place. And also particle stream, and as you can see down here, particle stream is still a big problem. And particle stream is used, it's used in a number of places, specifically over in the matter science down here that chugs through lots of it. We've talked about, we've talked about the particle stream issues over here with whether it's being pumped in or out in, into the, in, in these machines. Um, and it turns out we want to pump it out, but even so, we still have a shortage of it because it's used in, in larger quantities by the rest of the science facilities up here. All of these, put a lot of these pull in a load of a particle stream. And also, it's used in huge quantities over in the deep space science for, for this science card, data card down here, the, uh, the, the snowflake one. It's not a snowflake. What is it, what is it actually meant to be? It is a, a nano engineering data apparently and that uses quite a lot of the particle stream and so as you can see over here we now we don't have any of these data cards and that 
that is not the right that is not the right uh, belt. We do not have any of these data cards. They would be coming up here, and so that has caused the uh, Deep Space Science Catalog ones to grind to a halt. We've not made any of these for absolutely ages. We did get a little bit of it through in a train a little while ago, uh, and we made a handful of them. So we we did manage to make a, f a few of the uh, catalogs, but it's not been enough for the for the train to think it's worth sort of actually considering going anywhere. And I can't even find where the train. Oh, down here. Nope, that's cubes. Uh, down here. It's not enough for the train to have left yet. It's just. It's a bit pathetic. We've made we've made sort of five hundred of them, and that just isn't enough to keep the system happy. And so yes, particles particle stream is now the problem. So we we fixed the initial issue, which was the lithium production, but it now turns out that we're using up the particle stream so quickly that actually these machines there's quite a lot of machines in here, but even so they're still not enough. And we have we have chucked quite a lot of uh, modules at them with both uh, speed and uh, and efficiency to try and bring the power usage down a little bit because these particle accelerators use crazy crazy amounts of power as we've I think we've discussed this before. But anyway, they also use crazy amounts of sand to make the particle stream. So I guess the particle stream is made by um, hitting sand with plasma and it just goes boom and turns into a load of particle. I don't know. You also need the material testing packs to be brought in as well. So they're, 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 there's, there's lots of stuff being used over here. So yes, this was not sufficient. So Tristan came along, he did some upgradings, um, mo mostly um, by just making this machine here run obscenely quickly. So previously, it um, I don't think the beacon was even there, it just had tier 3 speed modules in it, and it was producing about a belt of, um, of sand. The stone was flowing in nicely over here. A belt of sand was coming out. It was actually it was coming out. This it was this belt. It's coming out into here and then pouring down here to be made into the it made into the particle stream. And yes, we had a, it had it coming down here. And there was this feeder belt coming along here and bringing dropping some more in part way along when when all of this sand got used up. And that was that was okay. It was working initially, but then we started to need a bit more. So um, yeah, so now instead of having three tier three speed modules in here, we have tier six. Yes, tier 6 speed modules in here, and a beacon. Uh, now, I did suggest that we could have just put an extra couple of machines in up here or over here or something like that to generate the extra sand, but I think Tristan just wanted to play with the high tier beacons. So, we've got tier 6 beacons running here. This machine is running at 9 times, well, just over 9 times its normal speed. And so, we're able to get a solid belt coming out of here, solid belt, three, in total, three solid belts of sand flowing out. And those are being passed down here onto these various belts and along here, and, well, we, um... We aren't quite getting through all of the. We aren't quite, aren't quite getting through three solid belts of sand. However, we are using it almost as fast as we're producing it. So you can see this machine is it's green light a lot of the time, but it is occasionally flickering over to yellow. So in theory, yes, we could use a bit more sand out of this machine if we wanted to, but it'd be a bit of a struggle. As you can see, a train has just turned up, and keeping this station supplied with stone in order to make the sand is also quite an effort, and it's also bringing up lots and lots of lithium as well, because again, in order to make all of this particle particle stream, we need plasma stream, and so we need lots of the uh, lithium going through the machines up here. So so this train is being kept very, very busy. Tristan has helped it a little bit by increasing the amount of stone we're requesting from, I think it was 3,000 to 6,000. So that means we're trying to keep a larger amount of it up here. And that will hopefully mean, and it seems to, and it does seem to mean that we can keep it pouring out at this rate and keep this machine completely satisfied uh, and keep the train busy as well. And so it, it does seem to be working well. We are producing the plasma stream at a, at, a, at a healthy rate. If we take a look at this over the last hour, you can see that before it was maxing out at about five and a half thousand per minute. Now we've got it up to about seven, just over seven thousand per minute. So it's a, it's an increase of a, a decent, it's a decent increase of about forty percent. But it's still, it's still not enough. So, uh, so that meant that then after, at, right at the end of the last stream, I decided, okay, so we can't produce the particle stream fast enough over here. This seems very familiar because previously we couldn't produce the ion stream fast enough. And so I fixed the first problem by coming over here to the deep space science area and building up this area, which is producing the uh, plasma in large quantities. It's producing iron stream in large quantities. So the logical thing to do then is to go and design a, pro a system like this that can be tacked onto the bottom of the, of, the, of the existing system, and we'll then start producing the particle stream in large quantities as well. And so this is this is nicely ba reasonably balanced in that we've got one machine over here producing the sand from a steady flow of um, of, of stone coming in, and this is about the right amount, the, about the right number of machines to churn through all of that. Um, so as you can see, all these um, at least it was supposed to be. This is not flowing anything like as much as I would expect it to. I'm not sure what's gone wrong here. I'll have to come back and take another look at this because this was previously, I'm sure this is flowing much uh, much more solidly. But um, anyway, next stream I should be improving this and then fitting it onto the bottom of the deep space science is um, cloud production area over here because it's straight, straight up not capable of keeping up. Whether I'm then going to need even more uh, plasma stream generation uh, to keep it all happy, I don't know. We shall see when, once I build it, but uh, that, that may well be a possibility. But we'll, we shall see how it goes. 
this will then be able to pass its particle stream over here into the system over here so we'll be able to turn off the state whichever station it is down here that's supposed, supposed to be bringing in particle stream and not doing a very good job of it and that will hopefully then mean that we have enough of it flooding in over here that we can just keep that we, that we can keep all of these systems happy and to put an extra chunk of load on it uh, Mike has been trying to make lots and lots of uh, antimatter capsules down here in order to go off in order to turn them into um, into arcosphere collectors and so that also requires our particle stream and so that's been another another load on the system and is part of the reason why we're struggling quite so much however I can't see Mike not wanting to make um, arcosphere collectors um, in huge quantities over the next few weeks so I think we're just gonna have to work with that and and as I say make a system over here that's going to make the particle stream fast enough that the whole thing will work Continuing the theme of update shenanigans, Mark made an uncomfortable discovery. So uh, he, uh, in previously, we've all had thruster suits, uh, which are great. They're being made. Are they being made? They're being yeah, being made, making the high end ones over here. And the idea is the thruster suit. Basically, it's a space suit. You can fly around with it, and it has an equipment grid like this. That you can put a load of stuff into, and it's it's just it's just quite it's it's a perfectly good suit. It doesn't give you quite as much protection as the power armors, but it it works. It, it's somewhere to put your jetpacks. It keeps you alive in space. Generally, it's pre it's a pretty good system. Them. However, it turns out that since the update, you're no longer allowed to put lasers, personal defense lasers, into your into your into your thruster suits. They just they won't go in there anymore. They're they 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 are not allowed. And that, so there's um, there's a clear intention that you're supposed to now use power armor for combat. So Mark uh, grumbled about this a little bit, but then he sort of decided, okay, well I'll, I'll make a power armor. They are better for combat anyway. So you can see here we've got the system because it's a telescopic recipe. We've got um, iron being fed in to make uh, the 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 basic armor. What, what's it even called? It's called light armor. Then that's being combined with some steel to make the heavy armor, and then combined with some circuits to make the modular armor, which is combined with some better circuits and some uh, electric motors to make the power armor Mark One, which then gets more stuff as you can see to make the power armor Mark Two, and then more and more and more and more to make the power armor Mark Three, and then up to eventually the the power armor Mark IV, which requires lots and lots of high-end ingredients being to be fed into it. And so this is all being done by bot, which I think, to be honest, with this level of, of um, nonsense and requirements, I'm absolutely fine with that. This is the sort of thing bots are good for, because we're not going to be making these things in, in huge quantities. We'll probably make about four of them, and then maybe one or two more if, if, if we have tragedies. So basically, this is, this is pretty good. At some point, I'll come over here, I'll grab one of these, and I'll load it up with lasers and all that sort of stuff. But it turns out that even, that even the high-tier power armors can't keep you alive in space. And that's even if you put a life support equipment into them. So the, we, Mark's thought was, okay, a thruster suit is just a power armor with less armor and with a built-in uh, jetpack and a built-in life support equipment. So fine, if you don't, if you want, um, if if you want to go power the power armor route, then you just make a power armor, you fill it up with lasers, and you tuck a life support can uh, system in, in the corner, in, in the bottom corner as well. But no. It turns out that is that is fine for keeping you alive on uh, planets that have been plague rocketed, but it won't keep you alive in space. And so this means we now we're now all going to need to have two separate sets of pajamas: one for fl flitting around in space and probably doing construction stuff and loads of jetpacks and all that sort of thing, and then a second one for when you're uh, running around on the ground and trying to beat up biters, because so you can fill it up with laser defenses and so on and so on. And the uh, the gr the grids sort of support that to an extent. So the thruster suit Mark III, as you can see, has a 12 by 14 grid, which is a, a decent size to be fair. There, but the power, oh actually no, I take it back, the Power Armor Mark IV has a slightly smaller grid. So you can, you'll be able to fill it up with lots and lots of lasers, but you won't be able to put quite as many jetpacks in or whatever. And if you're really going combat heavy with one of these, then you don't want to be you don't want to be using the jetpacks because with the jetpack you can't use the sh energy shields. Um, if you're flying, the energy shields constantly take damage, and it just, and think and I can't remember whether that knocks you out of the sky or they're not compatible anyway. So you end up having to use the adaptive armor instead, which is nothing like as tough. Uh, it provides a little bit of protection, which is why I've got a load of it in my in my thruster suit, um, and it does and it works perfectly with the perfectly well with the jetpacks but the uh, the shields don't and the shields are the ones you really want to be using if you're doing combat because they're, again they're so much tougher so i can see that we may be uh, flitting but flicking back and forth between two different sets of armor using the, um, the the thruster suits to fly around when we're in space when we're doing building all of that sort of stuff and then when we're about to get into combat switch over to the other uh, power armor and probably a high high tier one like the mark IV, uh, because that'll be full of lasers and shields and, and and probably exoskeletons so you can run reasonably quickly and that'll allow us to defend against the uh, the biters a bit more effectively so uh, yeah, there's going to be some uh, some changes are going to have to be made there. 
The most upsetting part about the upgrade is it didn't take the uh, the lasers out, the laser turrets out of your inventory, out of your armor, and put them back into your inventory. It just destroyed them. Uh, so we've we've lost a load of the lasers we've made, but which is annoying, but not the end of the world. They're not that expensive. But as you can see, if I want, if I try and put these back in here, it, it just won't let me. The, these things are not compatible with that particular type of suit. So that was a shame. But it did lead to Mark putting together this uh, comically long and, um, I won't call it complicated, but this this, this long chain of, uh, of systems to produce the high tier armour. So uh, thank you for that. As I say, I shall flo float in at some point and, uh, and, and, and grab one of those. He did also, while he was trying to change his pyjamas around, swap, back and, swap him back and forth between the armours, he did a few times dump large quantities of inventory on the floor, so he spent a little while picking that up. But, you know, we have bots for that, so it wasn't too serious a problem. <laughs> And continuing on the uh, subject of combat, Tristan has carried on expanding out to the east. So as uh, as, as usual, he's he's doing it all by robot because he's um, elsewhere and and, and and lazy. And you know, to be fair, this is a fairly fairly effective way of doing it. And so he's been slapping down this steady row of um, laser artilleries that are working their way out with uh, with robot ports all the way around the edges as well. And um, and yeah, so they're. As you can see, they are taking pot shots at the biters whenever they stick their heads out, uh, because they have a ludicrous range. The biters don't really stand a chance. Uh, and uh, and uh, if we look on the map, we can see that there are probably some bots. Yes, there's some bots over here. Oh, those are, those are going away. Yes, these these two down here, I think. Yes, as you see, they've got uh, rover ports that they're bringing out towards the towards the new area. They're just struggling a bit because of uh, bot range and bot battery life and so on. So eventually they'll, they'll they'll eventually they'll find their way up here. They'll be able to extend out the amount of these uh, the laser artillery area that we've, uh, we've 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 built. So they'll put put in these ones, and then as soon as as soon as they can, they'll start shooting at all these nests and worms over here. And this is this is giving us a, gra a gradual expansion. And if I turn on the, uh, the 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 thing that shows where the uh, laser turrets are, you can really see how much territory he's managed to claim now. So the bottom end of what he's done has been coming over here across the bottom um, and then uh, he's cleared out this entire area in the middle and is gradually removing the the lasers up the side here. So there's a few down here that could probably... What's going on down here? Okay, there's a few biters over here that haven't quite been finished off yet. Probably because there were some water water difficulties and so we've got no power over here. But yeah, this is still it's taking pot shots at the biters and fairly soon he'll have got power to these turrets and they may, maybe they'll have full coverage to clear the entire planet. We'll find out fairly soon, I guess. Um, but as you can see, yes, the laser artillery is making light work of the biters. They don't really know, they don't really understand where it's coming from because these ones are out on islands, so they're just being, they're just shooting from, the, the biters can't path to them, so they're, uh, so they're doomed, basically. They're just going to take pot shots at them and, and keep whittling away at them and, and probably pushing up our evolution level as, uh, <laughs> as they do it. Once that once that area over there is cleared out, then we'll have everywhere from well, this is well, this is significantly below the midline of the planet, uh, and it is now sort of approaching the, getting quite close to the top. So yeah, the clearing out is going well. Over on the other side, Mark it hasn't covered quite as much land. We do see we've got a solid line of the of turrets over here, and then a pretty solid one of them going over this this side as well. I don't know if this is where he was out playing doing at combat this week, but he is he is also making progress, and uh, and eventually that I guess the two of them will meet at the top of the planet, and then decide if they can be bothered to do the bottom of the planet as well. For a long time, we've had this area set up over in the, uh, actually just, just west of the middle of the base, where it's produced, which is process, doing all the processing and, and production of all the oil products. So we've got trains bringing in, bringing in oil here. I talked about this last week, how we've how I upgraded it to ducts, bring the ducts over here um, to bring the oil over and, and then crack it down into, uh, in, into uh, petroleum gas in this case, and heavy and light down here. And then all of that can be turned into the sulphur and the lube and everything else we need over here. So this area here has basically been doing all of our oil processing for a very, very long time. And it has been keeping up surprisingly well. And so we've, other than putting in the ducts fairly recently and adding little bits to it here and there whenever we needed to, to, to for, for new ingredients or to, to boost the processing a little bit, we've basically not bothered upgrading it too much. However, this week Mark decided enough was enough and this was getting a little bit too silly, so he has decided to make small oil. And that's been tucked away over here, and as you can see it's one of those things where you end up with where it's mostly railway lines and stations and things. Up at the top here, we have a handful of um, <laughs> of oil refineries that are producing enough oil for the entire factory now. At least that's a theory. As you can see, they've got they've got well, they've got the tier three productivity modules in them to give them a little bit of a boost, and then they're full of absolutely full of are these tier what are these tier five tier six speed modules to make them run really really fast. So we're going to reduce hugely, enormously reduce the number of machines we have running here, and hopefully that'll do some some good for our UPS because we do seem to be below forty now most of the time. And so we've got, yes, this little, this little collection here replacing all those refineries you saw earlier. 
then we've got this small area of, um, of chemical plants. So over here, we're just using the heavy oil oil cracking recipe. So we're producing loads of heavy oil and then cracking it down to the lower tiers over here, or at least we're supposed to be. It doesn't seem to be working at the moment because we don't have any heavy oil. I, I, I don't know what's going on here. This tank, oh, I see, the tank isn't quite full enough to pump more through. So that's, mm, that could be a problem. We might, I think we might need to, well, it's, I, I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it because I, I'm a little bit concerned by the throughput here. But anyway, yes, over here we're, we're cracking the, the heavy to light and then the light to petroleum and it'll keep the, uh, the tanks full as appropriate. And all this is done with ducts because normal pipes are not fast enough for these machines when you've got this many speed modules affecting them. And so, once we've got all of that, well, we still, we're still going to need all of the sulphur and the plastic and all the other things that we talk about uh, that come from oil. So down here, well... Mark has just gone straight for, well he's making the lube on site here with a um, with a, chem a single chemical plant that's affected by a, a, a beacon and he's just pumping it straight into these two tanks here. Great, okay. Then even more ridiculous, when we're making the sulphur, it's just going to be made on demand and then stuck straight into a train. So a train will pull in here, the sulphur will be made to be loaded into it because it's going to be made so quickly by the, all these um, all these advanced chemical plants that there's, there's no need to store it in a warehouse. We're going to, we're going to be able to have um, multiple solid belts of, uh, of sulfur pouring out of these machines uh, just, just to fill, them, fill, the, uh, fill the train up. So that's going, to be, that's going to be crazy. Then down here we've got the same sort of thing. Well, sulfuric acid does have a couple of tanks because but you need to, if, you want to, if you want to fill a train up re reasonably quickly, you need to be pumping straight out of a tank, really. Uh, then and we've got the iron here for making the sulfuric acid, and then down here plastic again, exactly the same way. We've got the plastic machines just dumping straight out into the into the train when it as it, as it arrives. Which this seems absolutely crazy to me because uh, I'm not I'm used to having to use the station as a bit of a buffer because you can't you can't produce stuff as quickly as a train is going to want it. But this system, I guess I can see it I can see it working quite well. Um, I mean I haven't actually seen it run in anger yet, but I could easily believe that it is going to be sufficient. And then down here, we're producing other things like uh, the things we need in smaller quantities, like the solid fuel and the and the uh, explosives and the and the rocket fuel. I believe the rocket fuel recipe changed as well, although I can't remember exactly how. So, yeah, there's um this is now this is this area is now going to be known as small oil or possibly smoil, um because it is so much smaller than big oil. But apparently, the throughput is going to be just as good. This is going to be plenty for all of our needs, and um we can and, and we can basically end of life this area over here and hopefully save an enormous amount of UPS. We shall see how that goes. On the tinkering with things front, I did as promised uh, in, in last week's uh, videos and I've now put in assembly machines up here that are making the underground space belts and, and underground and space splitters to go into making the deep space versions of each of those rather than bring them in by bot. So over here we do still have some left in these chests, however I've removed the logistics request so they're going to stop bringing them in and once they're empty we can then remove those and, and so on. So we need to start, I need to use a few of these deep space undergrounds and splitters in order to uh, in order to move over from there. I'm probably going to have to use about 40 before this empties because I've got inserters filling from both sides but you know what, I don't really care. Alternatively I could just demolish these and, and, uh, and, and just put it all back into the, into the robot port system. It doesn't really matter, the point is that that we're now making these making these things on site, and it wasn't too difficult to do. Most of the stuff that was needed was just was already available. Uh, the lube was one thing that we need red circuits up here. We did need to bring in bring the belts over though, and that I spaghettied in a little bit over here with this underground uh, deep space belt, and um, which appears to not be working. Oh, it's the wrong way round. Why is that the wrong way round? Um, yeah, I say it appears to not be working, <laughs> but well, yes, as I say, bring 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 all the belts over here with some fairly heinous spaghetti. But uh, yeah, the, the biggest problem with this actually, the biggest problem with this spaghetti is all of this stuff in the middle here that's going to stop me uh, running whatever's on this belt. Um, I don't know what... There's probably belt. Yes, here we go. So the pumps and the glass, if those are needed any further up, they're not going to be able to get through here because there's all of these other belts and things in the way. So I ended up having to do a bit of belt weaving, and I don't like or belt braiding, whichever you call it. And I don't like I don't like doing that. It breaks my um, it breaks breaks my sense of physics. So um, that I feel a little bit a little bit guilty about that. Maybe what I should actually have done is brought this over to hit, have it loop out a little bit, and then bring that under all of this to here and do that because that does not not that does not break the laws of physics and therefore is significantly more acceptable so maybe yes maybe I'll, I'll switch it over to doing this next time um, because it's less it's significantly less horrible and therefore I am um, I'm, I'm not, not so upset by it now see the thing is I don't mind I don't mind an underground belt going under this underground pipe here because it could just be a bit further down that that's absolutely fine and if you had and if I had two of them going at 90 degrees to each other so if I had an underground going like that and an underground going like that yeah it just means one of them is slightly deeper than the other. The thing I object to 
is when you have that going down there and then this going down after it and then coming up after this one because those two belts then have to occupy the same space and that just feels wrong. So, yeah, I'm th there is a, there is a there is a bit of rationale behind my uh, behind my madness and my strong opinions. Um Th th that that just felt wrong, and what I had here just felt wrong. However, bringing it out like this and then going underneath the uh, the inserters, that feels much less bad. So I think I'll leave it like that and uh, and feel a little bit less guilty about the whole thing. Tristan noticed that the Andragon junk station filled up completely. That's this one here. It filled up completely with barrels, as is traditional, because uh, well, Mike is digging up so much oil and uh, mineral water on Andragon that he's pulling through massive, massive quantities of barrels. So Tristan has tweaked the rules around here a little bit. We should now get more uh, downstream step trains coming over here, grabbing these barrels and taking them away. So hopefully that will fix it. In order to get it going again, he also put in a few more downstream trains, which I believe are stored over here. Yes. Yeah, so there's now there's now a couple more of these than we had before, and these are the ones that are just dedicated to taking stuff from up in Norbit down to the ground and in theory they shouldn't be needed as long as there's enough trains bringing stuff up to the entire the rest of the factory they will also take stuff down from the stations over here as well and so we shouldn't need too many more of these station these these trains however we occasionally have to take a train off doing the downstream route because heading all the way over here to grab stuff and so on it adds enough time onto it that we don't get enough throughput and also sometimes we just aren't bringing enough stuff up for the amount of stuff that we're trying to take down over on Bigrid, Mark has got his uh, mineral water mines up and running. So we're now digging that up. He's finished. He's managed to ship out some more ducks over here. So we now have all of these ducks running, o running over here, bringing the mineral water over to where it's required. And that's allowing the system over here to run nicely. It's running, yeah, it's running well. You can see we're, uh, we're pulling through basically all of the um, all of the core fragments that are coming in. So that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's running basically as fast as fast as the system is capable of running. So that's that's good. That's what we want. We want to be able to, we want to be able to turn all of the core fragments into, into stuff. Because if you're, if you're not bring if you're not churning through all of your core fragments, you are p wasting potential because in theory you could be processing more uh, out of what is, out of the steady stream that is produced a certain amount per minute out of the core mines. So you want to use all of that up because otherwise it feels wasteful. He also found that the chlorine problem reared its ugly head again as well over here um, because the vitalic reagent, which is this one over here, was not being made because he didn't have enough sand coming in to be made into chlorine. He wouldn't have enough chlorine being made because it's the lithium problem again, basically. Uh, now he has a proper th thro throughput here, that more chlorine being made. It can now keep all these machines happy and so we can have at least a quantity of vitalic reagent coming out. It looks like we're still a bit short of it over here, to be honest. I think we might need to uh, swap some of the, either put in some better speed modules here or swap some of these. Um, oh, no, no, it looks like it's a chlorine that's a problem still. So I think he needs a third, maybe a fourth machine over here to produce even, even more, 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 more chlorine uh, in order to keep this machine happy, to keep this one happy, to keep these happy and produce that vitalic reagent a bit quicker. And we do need this vitalic reagent to be produced quite quickly because if you remember, that's the one that's required in huge quantities over on Talos in order to make all of the, uh, in order to make the Naquium. And we, we're going to need lots of naquia. Oh, there is there actually there's there's quite a lot of machines making it across here. But even so, the uh, the balance is off. So we could come over here and go. Well, I want another copy of this like that, and then over here we'll do the same with the pipes. So that we've got the um, oxygen here, which is hydro, whichever one this is. Uh, oh, there's an inserter in the way there. It's not going to be quite as simple as I was initially suggesting, but I'm sure uh, Mark is more than capable of spaghettiing that in if necessary. Uh, so yes, we could do with a little bit more chlorine coming through over here. And I think that's enough to talk about for one video. I've been apparently been recording for 42 minutes, but a bit of that was thinking time and reloading the game time, so the video's not going to be quite that bad. So thank you very much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with the other half of this video, so keep an eye out for that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And then on Monday, I should be carrying on with the stream, fixing all the problems we've seen today, and building up and up and up and bigger and better and more and more and more. I should then be back as well on Wednesday where I should be playing some Satisfactory, carrying on with, uh, again, the, sort of the buildings on that and, and, and trying to trying to get the, keep the Space Elevator happy and satisfied. So, yep, please come along to that one. It's another good stream. Uh, there's lots of, um, you know, I have lots of opinions on Satisfactory and I'm not shy about sharing them. <laughs> and then, of course, I'll be back next weekend as well with some more of these catch-up videos. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.